Hello, welcome back to Grand Sushi Live Learning. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at another for loop example um, using sorcar nodes. Um, this thing can be kind of tricky, especially if you start to look at begin for each loop. But for now, we're gonna look at this begin for each component loop. So let's get the start and end, and let's save this just in case. So loop component. So with these nodes, um, if you kind of guessing, this node is actually doing and performing functions on every component of a of a mesh. Um, I believe for every component that's being selected. Um, but let's give this a try. So let's try with a with a grid and plug this in like that and the output goes there so if you're doing it like this it's um, definitely wrong because we don't have anything happening in between so we want to have for example inset and if you if you actually Try and run this. Be careful. Be very careful. Don't set it here because this guy will actually um, repeat and loop multiple times endlessly. So be careful. Don't do this. This is like infinite loop. You're gonna select this this guy to closure the the loop. Set preview. Okay. And then if you, I believe. If you reset this, um, you should get a, just a single extrusion based on the the number of phase that's being selected. So let's set this to three by three or four by four, rather. So we have, yeah, we have exactly what we need now. So it's uh, it's performing inset for every phase. So what's the difference from before? Uh, let's try if we are actually um, let's use a random number for example you will see it here uh, we have index 8.0 that means um, I believe it's uh, it's running it nine times because of the, the number of phase over here and we have okay nine loops and we, we can try plug this in into the uh, thickness for example and suddenly we have nine different thickness let's see if we actually map the range so this one go from zero to eight and we can adjust this range to our own number so just a little small values but you can see for each face it's actually giving a different size which is a uh, really quite interesting oh actually this guy yeah it's uh, it's running between 0 and 9 or 10 So if this uh, this is interesting, it's a uh, we can do it individually or or not. Let's say instead of using map range, we use this number that's actually random. Plug this into thickness. Give it a bit of value. And enable random okay so it works right away uh, maybe we want to have the seed as well turn on the seed and plug this index into the seed so that's kind of didn't give any difference but if you use like math operations and index you can randomize the seed 
so that's nice this number random of course I think it goes from 0 to 1 so once again we need to use map range 0 to 1 and adjust this value so that it doesn't go outside of the boundary so now it's getting uh, it's starting to look a little bit more interesting random inset thanks to simply just using this begin and end for each component loop so we can have maybe 10 by 10 we have each one random um, this value is really dependent on the, on the the original mesh so be careful with that so let's try 5 by 5 we have 16 faces now it's each one with a random value so what if instead of just using inset we want to also play around with the depth we can actually delete this and then do something more after the loop we can try that in a bit so let's do another inset or extrude it's totally up to you you can go a little bit crazier if you use like a random select I have not tested but I have a feeling select random is better if you are using not for component loop but it's for other thing but you can try for now I'm just gonna use another inset and I'm gonna use a different depth so for each phase is going through the loop let's use this once again plug in the index a different seed random the same this one goes into the depth randomize the height so it's kind of like a very simple building and at this point you can continue um, let's say you at the very end here you select all but you select the, the face select okay and then you can perhaps select uh, what's next the boundary edges select region boundary maybe you can get a H okay cool yeah it works and then you extrude edges or just simply extrude and let's see what's gonna happen extrude it down okay so we have something here if you like you can actually use this components and then use it for every polygon face for example cube you can use tissue add-on if you want to do it quicker test tissue add-on so select the object select the component and then tessellate oops that's actually wrong select this guy and select this guy and tessellate so that's a uh, that's interesting we actually have some kind of normal push oh okay along normal individual phase so you, you learn something here definitely uh, so tissue that's what tissue add-on is doing and then you can do merge and then you can actually randomize the height as well and it works really well with add-on like Sorcar. Um, it will work with Spread Chalk as well, but Sorcar makes it really easy to make this kind of components. And this op uh, this guy is actually pretty clean, and you can print you can actually print this out. 
So if I subdivide, we have that. So that's kind of nice. Just a nice accident. So this one, the nice thing of course, it's like this thing is clean and you can further works with this guy, ensuring the face orientation is correct. And let's see, because we are nearly at the end of the video tutorial, let's try select random. I wonder if select random have any uh, influence if you put it over there. So it's select. Doesn't seem to have any influence. That's because this one's really doing it for each component of the face, regardless what whatever you are selecting over here. But what if you actually put select random inside this loop? So now it's thinking and might be crashing what's going on so for select random you probably want to use uh, for each and or just for loop so yeah it's probably the nose that you shouldn't use inside this begin for each loop because it's gonna create infinite loop but there you go, there's a quick look at begin for each component loop. And what's interesting, simple example, but we're gonna try to try and combine the for loop for each component and for each loop together at some point. I think I haven't touched on begin for each loop without the components. Um, maybe I should try that now actually. This one is definitely frozen. For the, uh, the for loop and so we have blender okay file open loop component okay this works file save as new blend so instead of using this let's detach let's use begin for each so object goes in begin for each this one oh. and for each this goes in there we have an array and we have this input object this is the output interesting we don't have anything elements okay we have elements set random what if we select put the elements there and then pass in the objects and for each loop begin for each loop oh there's an error there so it's looking for array hmm so that's interesting it's looking for array we never really use array so I wonder what this one actually does so yeah so begin for each loop and and for each loop is still a big question mark but uh, I'm gonna look at it but for now just as long you understand the begin for each component loops then it should be fine I, I don't know why we can't put this inside still uh, Maybe you can have multiple grid and then you can select random of this grid and then so this one will look at the components and then 
loop it. Well, anyway, it's a question. Um, hopefully you find this useful. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.